Um, I'm very pleased to introduce to you our first two guests from uh, this place because we have events in another three places. So thank you for being here uh, despite the weather and I hope you enjoyed this mesmerizing movie. Um, so we have with us tonight Mr. Alain Flecher, a prolific filmmaker, writer, photographer, and visual artist, a French uh, artist, uh, who created and directs Le Frenois, Studio National des Arts Contemporains de Tournecoin. Um, I would leave himself speak more about his work, maybe. I, I don't feel in measure to, to introduce him. I'm, I'm kind of uh, intimidated by the special guest that we have tonight. And I'm very happy also to, to have with us tonight Christian Blidariu, who is Vice Dean of the Faculty of Architecture and Urbanism from Timisoara, where he teaches the theory of architecture. Um, and as well, I think uh, he will introduce himself during the discussion. Thank you, and I will, I will let them discuss, and you're very welcome to, to address your questions. Thank you. Um, I also am a bit nervous about speaking in the microphone, so <laughs> I, we share something. Um, uh, Mr. Flecher, thank you for uh, your visit. Uh, it's a great honor, especially for me, to have this conversation with you. I have to say that for the past week, I, I tried to do as much research as possible on your work, as I, as I told you before, and uh, learn more about the Lebanese pavilion that uh, you have uh, presented this, this movie in. As I told you, I have not seen it yet, but hope to see it uh, as soon as possible uh, and uh, uh, immerse myself into the experience, because it is a, a spatial experience in itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, we discussed uh, this uh, uh, before we saw the movie, uh, there is clearly a difference between uh, the experience that you have in space, in, in the pavilion itself, and what we have seen here. There are several differences uh, in the way that the movie is presented, and even in the fact that now it has also an explanation. Uh, you, you have added text to uh, what was previously only uh, image. Um, how does this, uh, this uh, experience differ, uh, in your opinion? Okay, thank you for inviting me to show this film. It's the first time the film is shown somewhere, so it's, we could say it's a world premiere. <laughs> uh, the film was ordered to me by, by an architect, Ala Warde, who won the, the prize for the Pavilion of Lebanon in the Biennale of Architecture in Venice. And she asked me to film these olive trees in Lebanon, in the mountain of Lebanon. These trees are like 1,000 or 2,000 years old, and they're absolutely beautiful and fantastic and fascinating, but they're in a place spoiled by uh, an electric block, an old building, very ugly. And so I proposed to film at, at night, because at night you can put the light on what you want and you can uh, you know, erase everything which you are not interested in. So we went there by, by night with these lights, these moving lights. The lights were on rails and crane so that we could make the trees moving. They seem to move or the light moves on the trees. And so the installation in Venice, in this pavilion of Lebanon, is on the long space. And at the end of this long space, the film is projected in three very uh, large screens, seven meters high, so it's a, a high-quality image, and it's in three, three parts. The center part is this close-up on the, on the trees, the close-up, and the side screens are the, the other images of the trees with the light moving. So it's very different from here. The, the, the soundtrack is only based on the music in Venice, and for the film version, I added that voice. And I think the voice is the reason why this film can be presented here in a night of philosophy, because it deals with some subjects of philosophy, like space and time. 
It's true, it's a, it's a totally different experience, I imagine, and I have to say even for me, because uh, to be honest, I do not speak French, and I, I, I saw the movie uh, before, but without uh, subtitles, and I had to guess uh, most of the things that uh, you were saying, uh, and uh, I, I, not only that I guess, but I, I read a bit about the, the themes of the pavilion, and of course silence is a very important theme. Uh, and time as well, and this is a theme that uh, also appears in, in the work of Virilio, in his texts, and uh, uh, also I think in his paintings, of anti uh, the uh, this idea of, of, uh, of void or, or vacuum space, and it, uh, what I found interesting was uh, the way that each invited artist uh, somehow had something in common with the other one, so all these themes that were, were coming together, uh, was that uh, planned uh, by Hala uh, Warde, or uh, how did that happen? Yes, she decided everything. She planned the, the whole pavilion, and she asked some artists, she, 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 uh, she asked to the Pompidou Center that these uh, paintings by Virilio. She asked uh, uh, a lady, an old lady, like 83 or 84 years old painter of Lebanon, whose name is Ada Adne. To, uh, to lend her paintings, and she asked me to do the film. So what interested Alawade is the place of void in architecture. How can architectures be, be, be based on void rather than on emptiness, or, or rather emptiness than fullness, you know? And so that's why she asked me to, to film these trees who are so old, that they are after the age of dying. They are too old to die. Too old to die. <laughs> and, uh, and so they, they are in a special place in time, and they are a special space in, in space because they are so big that some of them exploded. Some of these trees, you, you, you think you are seeing seven or four trees. In fact, it's one tree that you know, expanded in space. And in the middle is void, emptiness. That is really interesting. And I was wondering, uh, looking several times at, at, at your movie before this experience here, and also looking at Virilio's paintings, is there any uh, connection that you tried to find in the way that you filmed these trees? Because I, I, can f I could see some resemblance between his paintings and, and the way that you use the lighting and, and the textures uh, of these trees, or it's something that is accidental? It's more an accident, I would say, because I decided the way to film just when Ala Wade showed me the photos of, this, of the, that place. Mm -hmm. I saw the trees, they were beautiful, but I saw these ugly space, uh, ugly things like, like electric block and uh, uh, installations with wires and, and an old wing, all this was horrible. And a, a road was crossing the, in the middle, in the middle of the trees. So I decided to erase all this by the light, by lighting the trees and put, leaving everything else in the darkness. And in fact, after she showed me the, the paintings of Virilio, I even filmed the paintings of Virilio because this exhibition is supposed to travel. Mm -hmm. And in the travel, she might not get the land of the, of the original paintings. So she asked me to film the paintings so that she can always in, insert the, the Virilio work in the exhibition wherever it's shown. And of course, in the, in the Virilio paintings, a, a, a big place is, is given to, to emptiness and to... The, you know, it's tra he is painting tracks left by things, you know, on on the on the horizontal surface. It's it, I think this this theme of, of voids and and representing voids, as you said, only through their limits, is is really interesting. Even for us architects, uh, how you represent space without having any sort of limit is always a challenge, and uh, it's almost a philosophical question. I think to see that in in, in this pavilion. There is like uh, an entire uh, inventory of, of techniques of showing this voice. We have technical drawings, uh, you have paintings uh, to different artists painting, then you have the, the, f uh, the photos. Uh, uh, of course, your, your videos, it's, it's like uh, an entire arsenal of, 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 um, of mm. mediums uh, trying to represent this in 
mostly intellectual idea of, of void and space. But is this void to be seen uh, as it is in everyday space, in real space? Where would you find that, in, in, in your opinion? Or it has to be manipulated and imagined in, in some way or another? I think, you mean, how do we, where do we find this voidness? <laughs> exactly, yes. In the real world? In the, in the real world, yes. <laughs> this is a question. <laughs> Is it I, just an intellectual construct or...? Uh, I think that architects like Alawali are dealing with this, you know, how to build around emptiness and how to uh, have building which is more void than, than matter. Presence, than. Yeah. But um, I, don't, I don't know where in, 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 the real, in the real spaces, real life, Emptiness is, uh, I think, we, the, the, real, the reality is too full of things and there is a, a lack of emptiness. And the title of the exhibition is A Roof for Silence. Alawada uh, tried to, to organize a, a, a space of emptiness and silence. And she's fighting against uh, fullness and, and, and sound. Another thing she added in the, in the space of the pavilion, from the entrance to the uh, projection of the, my film, she, she laid on the floor broken glass. And this broken glass came from the explosions of Beirut. You know, these terrible things that happened in Beirut recently. She collected the, the broken glasses of the buildings and she made a, a long track on the on the on the on the on the, pavement. Yeah. on the ground, going from the entrance of the pavilion till the uh, olive trees. Yes, that, that is also a very important addition. Of course, I, I forgot to mention that. I, I looking at your previous work, and it's quite extensive. Uh, I have to say, from what I could find, and uh, um, but I, I, I have seen uh, some of the themes that uh, are visible here in in previous uh, uh, videos uh, that that you have produced. This this idea of uh, superimposition of layering of projecting things uh, mm -hmm. on top of other things, uh, uh, cultural artifacts, uh, aesthetic uh, artifacts on banal objects, and here you you chose to use light mostly, as you said, to hide and yes. to show at the same time. <laughs> exactly, I believe that the world is lightened by images. You know, images are bringing light to the world. And I have my own, my personal uh, astronomical theory, which is a joke, of course, but just imagine that the sun, instead of being a, a, a projector of white light, is a film projector. And so we are the images sent by the sun, instead of being human beings lit by the sun. We are images. It's true, it's true. Without light, we are nothing. <laughs> Yes, I think that this is this is uh, this is uh, most evident in in, uh, in this movie uh, in the way that that you manipulate light and you use the camera. And I, I was wondering, uh, there is an, a, a certain rigor in this whole process, but also an artificiality to it. Uh, does that enhance the um, space? Is, is it something that? transforms reality through the, the eye of the beholder, the, the gaze of the author, or um, uh, how much, let's say, um, of the um, um, original qualities of the space is maintained through this type of, of visual manipulation. You said, of course, that the space around was, was terrible. Uh, and. I'm not sure I get, I get your questions, but uh, um, what I believe is that everything is light. And so the way you, you, you put light in a space um, is just, uh, is just um, a way to show that matter is light. Everything is light. This object is light. Okay. And you know, in astronomy, there are these theory of the black holes, 
The black holes in, in the sky are invisible huge planets which concentrated into a uh, very heavy, heavy block. This object on the surface of this planet would weigh two million tons, for instance. And so these uh, objects in the sky are so heavy that they, that they keep their own image, their own light, the photons. Exactly. The photons can escape from these planets. So this shows how much uh, the matter is only light. And if, uh, if the light, uh, if, if an object cannot uh, liberate its light, it disappears. This object it doesn't, doesn't exist, exist anymore. It's true, it's true. Uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry for uh, my <laughs> probably too uh, complicated uh, line of questioning. Uh, I was going towards that because uh, in architecture, light, of course, as we all know, is, is a very important, uh, let's say, enabler of form. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, of course, uh, working in, the, in this field, light is probably, again, like a paintbrush that you use. Uh, uh, you, we, we've talked before, and uh, of course, you are famous for uh, working with famous architects, uh, Jean Nouvel being one. And uh, you said before we started this conversation that you studied architecture on the side and, and, and wanted to, to uh, uh, develop yourself through this medium as well. Uh, and since I know there are many architects uh, in the room, <laughs> I was wondering what, what, what is your relation with architecture, either besides working with architects? So in fact, when I was young, I, I hesitated learning architecture. Finally, I decided social science and, and cinema, but uh, I was very much fascinated by the theory of architecture. And uh, when, I, when I created Le Frenois, that school in the north of France, I met Bernard Chumi, who is a famous architect, and I started talking with him. And so I studied architecture just after my studies with my collaboration with architects. So for the project of Le Frenois, I have been working a lot with him. And so he uh, used some of the aspects of the theory of cinema in the theory of architecture. And for instance, he created in the building uh, a figure of editing in cinema, which is called jump cut. A jump cut in cinema is inside a shot. When you want to shorten a shot, Cut in, cut in the middle, but then the two parts which have to connect, they have to connect with, without, without being visible, without, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to make this, uh, this cut invisible because you, you took a part of the shot in the middle. And so in the, in the building of Le Frenois, he created the same kind of editing uh, structure. He created a, a new building over an old one. And between the two, there is a void space. And it's, it's a kind of jump cut. So I've been learning architecture when Phil been architect. I've been dealing a lot with Jean Nouvel, speaking with him a lot. I made a long film for a portrait of him for the French TV. Then I've been filming the Louvre in Abu Dhabi. And, um, and so I... I I have been learning architecture <laughs> by late. working with architects. Yes. By, yes. Is, is that how you, you met uh, Ala Warde in, in yes. Abu Dhabi? Yes, she was, a, she was an assistant of Jean Nouvel. Yes, yes. In fact, she was the main architect in, in, uh, in the Louvre Abu Dhabi. She was there. She was directing the, the work. Uh, to, um, to, uh, <laughs> to be honest, I think now, thinking about the, the Louvre in Abu Dhabi, that many of the themes that that project has uh, are, are visible in, even in, in this pavilion, the, the idea of, of, of voids, yeah. uh, of silence. Yes, uh, I've yes. not, of course, seen the building, only in pictures, but I think there are, uh, there are many uh, resemblances between... Uh, it's a roof. Exactly. The roof of Abu Dhabi is a roof. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I understood now a very important theme, I think, uh, by... <laughs> uh, um, 
hearing your text and finally understanding what you're saying in, in the movie uh, that is time. And uh, the, of course the movie is called The Pillars of Time, the, the trees are pillars of time. And Virilio speaks a lot about this uh, idea of time, uh, of, about accidents uh, in time and how time that used to have like a clear vector past, present, future is compressed now. And we live in, 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 a, in a world, I think, especially in the past, year and a half with the pandemic, uh, very much similar to the timeless or real time that Virila described. And to me it was surprising to see that uh, after such a complicated period for all, for all of us, when we were enclosed in our own prisons, spatial prisons, mm -hmm. uh, the, this, this pavilion comes and speaks about this, the, this uh, uh, special need for a different kind of time and, and, and space. You, you think this influenced, uh, this experience of the pandemic influenced uh, your perception and how you view this project or? I don't think so. No. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think you are right. This period can influence lots of things in the field of cinema or art, literature. And I've just read a, an essay by a French uh, uh, theoretician of cinema about what the cinema became after the pandemic. But I, but I believe in that special situation of the, the work of Alawade, it didn't it, it have no impact. interfere. Yes. Um, she, was, you know, she was very obsessed about what hap what's happening to Lebanon. Lebanon is living in war for many years. It can be destroyed many times. And the last event was a catastrophe. Of the, the, the historical part of uh, Beirut was destroyed. So the emptiness came by violence. It's true. That that's a very important key of uh, understanding what, what happened there. And of course, the intervention on the floor speaks, mm. uh, speaks a lot about uh, what, what has happened to, to Beirut and Lebanon uh, mm. in itself. Um, I think um, if there are m any questions from, from the audience, uh, maybe there are, there are people that would like to ask something. Nobody wants to. I'll have a... right. uh, first of all, I love the interplay, what, what I saw at least, as an interplay between what is organic, the actual trees which is taken behind, the texture of them and the, what looked to me like the harder artificial because of the special lighting that you've used. I was wondering what sort of lighting did you use? I saw some moving heads blazed high up or how do you create this uh, textural effect? We had heavy sunlight mm. on a crate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and on rails. Yeah, yeah. So the light moved on, on all the dimensions, mm -hmm. horizontally and vertically. Yeah. It was a dolly, what we call the mm -hmm, dolly, mm -hmm. and the rails and, 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 the, and the crane. All right. And so it, it moved and this makes the, the, the light and the shadows yeah. move. And I was also wondering, uh, do you know uh, Mortensen, the photographer? I, I Mortensen. The, uh, there's a photographer called Mortensen. Mortensen. Ah, yeah. Uh, then disregard that. He, he had a thing about textural lighting that uh, was somehow very akin in spirituality of what you did. I was curious if you looked at his pictures or anything. He was an American photographer. Huh? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, an American photographer called Mortensen. Do you have any idea about him? I, I don't understand. I, don't, I cannot hear. The sound is... Uh, He's asking about some uh, photographer called Mortensen that uses very similar techniques to ah, yours okay. in lighting. Uh, in lighting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know them. No. Uh -huh. I, I, I have been using this technique in some other documentary films. Mm -hmm. For instance, I, I did lots of films on sculpture, mm -hmm. Rodin or Brancusi, and uh, I used these moving lights to make the sculpture move. Mm -hmm because the shadows can move, can get another size, you know, and uh, I think that moving the light can make move still objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And so that's what I use this technique in my films in, on, on architecture, but on sculpture, dance, mm -hmm. and... Uh, yeah, I just loved it. Thank you. I like to work with lights very much. I think the, the, the filmmakers are working on light, and they start from the black. You know, painters start from the white, the white canvas, and they put painting on the white canvas. Instead of that, photographers and filmmakers start from the darkness, from the, from the black, and it's the light that gives the, you know, the image. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much thank for you your to presence. you thank you for inviting me